Hello everyone, I'm Ubersui and today I'll show over 100 different things you can do with the create mod. For example, you could make a secret elevator that pops out of the ground when the correct button is pressed. And that's just one of the many things I'll be showing you throughout this video as we make our way around Ubersui Labs. Everything from the basics like infinite limestone to more advanced stuff like 3D printers will be covered. I've also asked a few other YouTube creators to join me and share some interesting things that you can do with the create mod. So while I take the train, I'm going to hand the camera over to the Jojo the Awesome. Hello, my name is D Jojo the Awesome and I do create mod let's plays, guides and other random content. And did you know that in the create mod you can power a steam engine entirely with chickens? This takes advantage of an easter egg where the little blaze burners look like calcifer from Hallow's Moving Castle and they will eat eggs when tossed at them from a deployer or a dispenser. Thanks for having me on and back to you, Ubersui. Thanks to Jojo. Now let's hand over the camera to Polart. Not only can you place items on weighted ejectors to help get rid of those pesky diamonds, you can also use it for players to help transport yourself around your world. And it can even work with mobs, but do be careful because unlike players, mobs do end up taking fall damage when they land on the weighted ejectors. In your world, do you want a train that's not a train? By putting all your carriages underground, you can build whatever you want on top. And by using curves, you can get really organic snakes, I mean shapes. Like my friend Mr. Snake here. He's a working train, but he looks absolutely adorable and the curves are really organic by just making him as small as possible. You can use this to build all kinds of different creatures or trains in your world. Wow, that is amazing, Polart. Now, here's Stam to tell you a few more things about the Create Mod. Hey, my name's Stam. You may know me by Stamio, and I make survival create videos. I'm currently working on building a giant interconnected region with factories, trains, and so much more. I focus a lot on the building aspect in Minecraft, and therefore I have three quick building tips using the create mod. First one I've got for you is a neat way to light up your world. If you grab a shaft, metal bracket, and a lantern, you can place this shaft on a wall with a metal bracket on it, and then you can place a lantern hanging from that for a neat way to light up your factories. This also works if you want to grab a soul lantern and you can do the exact same thing. One I've quite recently discovered is the use of metal girders and, if you're feeling fancy, a flower pot to create some chimneys. If you just stack up a few of these on some roofs, you can place a flower pot on top of that and you got yourself a few chimneys. While it can be difficult to get them to emit smoke, it is a great decorational piece. And now my personal favorite, creating diagonal buildings. So let's grab a mechanical bearing and a copper valve handle and quickly create a little building. And with a little shack built here, if you head on the inside, you can change the mechanical bearing to only place when anchored and destroyed. And then turning our valve at the bottom, you rotate the building. And of course, you aren't limited to making houses. You can make things such as ramps to make a nice way up to a catwalk, perhaps. So there you have it. Three quick decoration tips. Thank you, Stam. Those are some awesome decoration tips. Now, one thing I love about Create is the fact that you can make trains. And you're not limited to passenger trains. You can also make trains that load and unload cargo at different locations. This even works for fluids. If you right click on a display board with a display link and then place the display link on a station, the estimated arrival time for all trains going to that station will then be displayed. It's even possible to show a unified display board for multiple platforms in a larger station. To do this, you will want to use an asterisk as a wildcard character to match multiple station names. In this case, my stations are named Main Station A, B, C, D, E, and F. That will then show all trains arriving and which platform they arrive on. Now here's Batsy to tell you about a few more things you can do with Create. Hello humans, I'm Batsy, and I'm here to help you with Create Logistics, and even improve some of the lag of running very big factories with many belts. Funnels have a limited speed at which they work. Even if the belt is running at max speed, the funnel won't be able to fill up the belt. An interesting interaction with the funnels is that, when a funnel is locked by a redstone signal, it will spit an item at the very first tick that it gets unlocked. With that idea, we can do some funny things. That's why we are going to use this really fast redstone clock. A powered latch has two inputs. One at the back, which will turn on the latch, and two more on the sides, which will turn off the latch. What happens is that if the signal from the back is constant, and we reroute the signal from the front to feed itself on the side, it will constantly turn on and off at the highest speed possible. Having a single tick online, and a single tick offline. 
By spamming the funnel at this speed, now we are able to completely fill up the belt, managing to have a much higher throughput than we would normally have. Those numbers are according to the display link calculation from Create. Belts still present other issues. Like what happens when you use a tunnel with two or more outputs. Because the tunnel is much slower at distributing items, even without the redstone clock, it ruins the speed we were having and backlogs the belt. But we can fix that, and it's all thanks to this minecart contraption I have right here with one single barrel. It's common knowledge that a portable storage interface will access the minecart's inventory to extract whatever items we want to extract from the contraption. We can also use a portable interface to input materials into the minecart. That means that we can move items instantaneously between the input and the output interfaces. Say no to those nasty belt spaghettis and welcome the instant long distance transfers that are the minecarts. Now go subscribe to Uber, go do it. You are one click away from awesome content. Thanks Batsy, those were some really cool ideas. Now you may know that you can use water and lava to make a cobblestone generator, but did you know that honey and lava make limestone? You can also use chocolate and lava to make infinite scoria. Horses are nice, but did you know you can use an encased fan to pull up soul fire onto horses? After a few seconds, the horses will be turned into skeleton horses. Now, here's Skeej to tell you about a few more things you can do with Create. Hello, it's me, Skeej, your friendly neighborhood lizard man, here to show you ways to troll your friends with the Create mod. Now, if you're like me and have a pathological need to press buttons, you can use this to trick your friends into a free trip into outer space. When they press the button, a plow arm swings round and sends the unsuspecting player into orbit. Let's just hope they have feather falling. Next up is a contraption for those who really don't want people going through their chests. As soon as someone opens it, they get pushed away. Try stealing my diamonds now, Uber. And if all else fails, just make a useless machine. Guaranteed to keep you distracted for hours. Thanks, Skeej. Those are definitely some good ways to prank your friends. Did you know that with the Create mod, we can make some fake water with waves that features a boat bobbing up and down? This is done using mechanical pistons and a bunch of redstone. By using a valve handle connected to a gearbox and a mechanical bearing, we can make rooms that rotate when we press the valve handle. Every press will rotate 180 degrees. In the same way, we can also make rooms that rotate when we activate a redstone signal that activates a sequential gearbox. Although, the villager does get a little hurt when rotated upside down. Did you know that you can use rollers to automatically fill an area with any block? Just make sure to have the blocks in the contraption or train's inventory as you move forward with the rollers and they will fill the area underneath. It's also important to glue your entire contraption. Otherwise, you'll end up with missing chests just like I did here. Did you know that you can climb up rope pulleys? Simply walk up to a rope pulley and your character will start climbing upwards like this. You can press sugarcane using a mechanical press to make paper. This has the same efficiency as normal crafting but does it one at a time. You can make glowstone by using a spout to add a potion of night vision to cinder flower. You can also make redstone by using a spout to add a potion of strength onto cinder flower. You can use fluid pipes to make a shower with fluids that can't be placed as a block. So here, we can make a poison shower for example, and as I stand under it, you can see that I got poisoned. In the same way, we can also make a milk shower to cure our poison, and as you can see, when I stand under this, my poison will be removed. By using a mechanical bearing and some clever block placement, we can make a garage door that opens like this. I'm using a valve handle here, but using a sequential gearbox, you could do this with anything. If you use multiple mechanical bearings together, the additional bearings will keep their original rotation while moving, which allows you to make a ferris wheel, for example. This is sure to keep the villagers in your world happy and entertained. Did you know that you can use funnels on the side of the belts? This allows for more compact factory designs when distributing or filtering items on belts. Using a belt, we can place items into a basin like this, and then we flip the basin upside down to make the items fall out. You can use some belts, a depot, and a display link to display name tags on a display board like this. So here I made a display for all of my YouTube members and Twitch subscribers. Thank you.
There's also a more compact version here, which just uses some chests and basic redstone. And I also had some help from my friend Guybrush, who made a really nice version of this, which cycles the names using a lot of complicated redstone, which I won't cover in this video. You can also make doors using the Crave mod. This door here first uses mechanical pistons to move one block back, and then a different set of mechanical pistons are used to move the doors to the side. Toolboxes are a great way to increase your carrying capacity. Simply hold the Alt key to access their inventory from several blocks away. Each slot can have up to 256 items, and the toolboxes can even function as filters and contraptions. It's also possible to access multiple toolboxes, and you can select from all of their inventories at the same time. So here I have placed 5 toolboxes, and as you can see, I hold Alt and all of them show up as possible choices, and I can click on each one to access their inventories. If I select an item, it will give me up to 32 of that item and automatically refill the slot if I go below. I can then use Alt again to return all of the items to the toolbox. You can use a clutch to turn machines on or off when you're not using them. This can help reduce lag. You can use dyes on a belt. So here I'm making the first belt yellow, this one pink, and the last one red. If you don't like the color, you can either use a water bucket to remove the color, or use a different dye on the belt. Items can be moved vertically using a belt, or a weighted ejector to throw the items upwards. You could also use some chutes over an encased fan, which is blowing upwards. And finally, you could use a mechanical arm to simply place items on a higher spot. You can haunt cobblestone using some encased fans and soul fire to get blackstone. Water wheels can now be changed to pretty much any color that you have as a plank. So we can make a cherry water wheel or even one out of bamboo. Using belts, you can also throw lava buckets through another portal. Here is what it looks like on the other side where we have a spout filling the buckets with lava. We can also send trains through nether portals. So here I have a very basic train with a fluid tank and some portable fluid interfaces to pick up and deliver lava. So let's send this train into the nether and we can watch as it fills up. As you can see, the fluid interface is now connected and the train is filling with lava. We simply have a pump up here which is pushing the lava to the train. Once the train is filled up, I have set the train schedule to send the train back again. Using a host pulley and a source of lava which is at least 10,000 blocks in size, we can get an infinite source of lava which is what I have here. You can also power water wheels with lava. This is useful if you need power in the nether where you're unable to use water. Trains can be automated by moving a train schedule onto a station. This will copy the schedule to the conductor without actually transferring the schedule. This is great if you need trains to pick up items on demand. If you need to fill an area like a kelp farm with water, a great way to do it is using a hose pulley. Simply use a mechanical pump to push water to it, and it will start filling the entire area with water blocks. Using redstone links, we can get wireless redstone signals. Simply set the signals to the same frequency and then power it, and we can see the signal transfer wirelessly. You can use minecart contraptions for all kinds of things. The possibilities are endless, so I made this contraption with three parrots. Create adds seats, which work in similar way to how boats work. This means you can seat almost any mob on them. So we could, for example, have a magma cube driving a train like this. We can use mechanical crafters to craft any recipe, such as taking four clay balls and making a block of clay. But Create also tends to offer alternatives. In this case, we can put four clay balls in a basin and compact them with a mechanical press to make clay blocks. To make blaze burners, we have to capture a blaze with an empty blaze burner, which can be difficult. However, you can also click a blaze spawner directly to fill your empty blaze burners. By standing on a turntable, you'll start rotating with the turntable and get really dizzy. Copper pipes will connect to any pipes next to it, but we can prevent this by using copper casings like this. We can also right click on a pipe to turn it into a glass pipe, which also prevents it from connecting to blocks next to it. We can also use metal brackets to decorate pipes like this, and there's also wooden brackets available for decoration. 
We can use a nozzle in front of an encased fan to blow air in all directions. So as you can see here, all the diamonds are being blown out from the center. We can use casings to decorate cogwheels, but we can also use it to prevent rotation between two cogwheels that are side by side like this. Normally rotation would transfer here, but because of the casing, it doesn't. Placing a casing on a cogwheel, which is already connected, will not break the connection. We can also decorate and hide shafts using casings. So that's what brass casings looks like. And here we have andesite casings. And just like with pipes, we can also use metal brackets and wooden brackets. Casings can also be used to decorate belts. And the look of the decoration is different depending on the rotation of the belts. These belts are sideways, so we only get the decoration in the middle. On horizontal belts, we get the decoration underneath like this. And this works for andesite and brass casings. We can also use a belt in our hand to extend an existing belt like this. And if we want to reduce the length, we can use a wrench. We can use a link controller to send out wireless redstone signals. This will allow you to use WASD, shift, and space to trigger different frequencies. Frequencies can be configured by shift right-clicking with the link controller in your hand. You can also place this on a lectern and use the controller by simply right-clicking. When doing this, all your keys are used for the controller instead of movement. If we have display boards, we can use a display link on a smart observer to show how many items are currently in an inventory. So here you see that we have 103,000 glowstone. This also works for fluid tanks. So if we put some lava in this tank, you'll see that the display link will update our display board to show 20 or 22 buckets of lava. You can make a honey farm by connecting fluid pipes to beehives. Give some power to mechanical pumps and they will pull the honey out of the beehives like this. You can use a speedometer and a stressometer to tell how fast and how much rotational power your machines are using. Connect a display link to these to show things like speed, stress used, and total stress available. Our total speed is 128. We are using 3072 stressed and we have 2 million stress units available. By taking an ender pearl, a precision mechanism, some glass, and obsidian and a brass ingot and put it in, into a mechanical crafter, we can make a wand of symmetry. This works in both creative and survival as long as you have the blocks available. Simply right click on the ground where you want to place your point of symmetry, hold shift and right click to change the settings, and as you can see here, when blocks are placed, they are replicated in the way that we have configured with the wand. This can be really useful when building structures. We can use three fluid pipes, a precision mechanism, an andesite alloy, and two copper ingots. This will make a potato cannon. This can fire potatoes and carrots, but gain additional effects when firing bait and poisonous potatoes. If we go ahead and use a brass ingot, a precision mechanism, six sticks, and finally a brass hand, we can go ahead and make an extendo grip. By putting the extendo grip in your offhand, you can reach further with both tools and blocks. The extendo grip will lose durability when used if you don't have an equipped copper back tank that's filled with air. With the crate mod, most items can be pondered by holding W when hovering your mouse over them. This will provide a visual guide on most things that you can do with the crate blocks. Using a mechanical bearing and some harvesters, you can make an automated farm like this. I'm also using a plow here to make the outline of the area so that it's easier to see where the crops should be planted. Then our farm uses a portable storage interface to automatically empty every time it goes around. You can make an elevator using the create mod. This can make use of redstone to call the elevator to the correct floor, and then we use a contraption controller inside the elevator to make a floor selection interface. You can even set different doors to open at different floors, as you can see here. And this is all done using an elevator pulley. You can cook dough using some encased fans and campfires to turn it into bread. You can make a milk farm by giving a bucket to a deployer and having the deployer milk the cows. 
The buckets are then taken from the deployer via mechanical arm and new buckets are fed to the deployer to continue the cycle. We can pour milk on bread using a spout. This will give us a sweet roll. You can use harvesters on a contraption to make a cocoa bean farm. After the harvesters have gone down, it will then empty its inventory using a portable storage interface. Then this is dropped via chute onto the belt here. To make chocolate bars, we can use some lava buckets to heat a blaze burner, which is located here under our basin. We then put sugar, milk, and cocoa beans in our basin and mix it to get the liquid chocolate. I'm using a smart fluid pipe here to make sure that we only get the chocolate out and not the milk. Finally, a mechanical press is used to compact the chocolate into a chocolate bar. We can use a spout to put honey onto apples to make honeyed apples. We can also use a spout to put chocolate onto sweet berries to make chocolate glazed berries. Using some mechanical saws, we can make a tree farm and then use harvesters to also collect the leaves. Then we're using deployers to replant any saplings that we get as the contraption moves around. Then items are outputted on the belt here. We can put milk and leaves in a mixer over a heated blaze burner to make builder's tea. Once again, we're using a smart fluid pipe to make sure we're only outputting the builder's tea. And then we can put that in a glass bottle using a spout and that will give us our drink. Crafting blueprints can be used to instantly craft items simply by right clicking as long as you have all the needed items in your inventory as you can see here. So we just instantly crafted a bucket, some shears, and we can also do a helmet. We can combine redstone with quartz to make rose quartz. We can then give sandpaper to a deployer which will then polish our rose quartz. And this will give us polished rose quartz. Using some mechanical crafters, we can combine an iron sheet with a polished rose quartz to make electron tubes. Items are fed to the crafter via mechanical arms. We can crush obsidian with crushing wheels to make obsidian dust. It also has a high chance of getting our obsidian block back for free, which is really useful. Then we can use a spout to pour lava on our dust. As you can see, the spout will ignore the obsidian block because there's no recipe that needs lava poured on obsidian blocks. However, our dust and lava will then get stamped by the mechanical press two times to make a sturdy sheet. Using stone slabs and some iron nuggets, we can make train tracks. We do this by placing the iron nuggets onto our stone slabs with two deployers, and then we press everything together with the mechanical press. We can strip logs with a mechanical saw and then use copper and brass ingots along with andesite alloy to make different types of casings. Here we have brass casings. Here we have andesite casings and here we have copper casings. And finally we have train casings which are made by placing a sturdy sheet on top of a brass casing. We can make an elevator using mechanical pistons like this. Giving it some rotation will push the floor that I'm standing on down. We can also make farms using minecart contraptions. Here we have some harvesters attached to our contraption which makes for a nice kelp farm. The portable storage interface will connect here and output kelp onto our belt. We can also make an elevator using encased fans. The air here will push the player upwards and we can move sideways to jump off at the upper floor. Windmills don't have to use sails. We could use sail frames instead to make our windmill. The total output will not be affected. It's even possible to use wool blocks and the shape of your windmill does not matter, so you can make them any way you would like. Metal girders can be used for decoration and can even be used around shafts. Shafts are still able to rotate even when they go through a metal girder like this. You can make an obsidian farm by placing a block of lava using some pipe next to a waterlogged block of leaves. Then use some drills to break the obsidian block. Create adds several new types of glass blocks such as frame glass. Frame blocks comes with several different variations. So in this case we have tile blocks here on the side. We have frame glass which is this connected texture glass right here. And we also have horizontal glass and vertical glass. 
And to make these, simply use a mechanical saw on glass blocks. Deployers can be used to both pick up and place minecart contraptions. This is done by giving a wrench to a deployer. I haven't found a use for this yet, but one day I really hope that I do. You can make a hidden staircase. This uses a skulk sensor to detect player movement, and then some mechanical pistons are activated to lower the floor, making a staircase. It's also possible to use some mechanical belts to make escalators. The most basic steam engine we can make uses four fluid tanks and is powered by a campfire. All we need is some rotational energy to input some water into our boiler. And as you can see here, it's outputting 2048 SU. Now this is the largest steam engine you can make. It is outputting 294,912 SU and needs superheated blaze burners in order to work. You can superheat blaze burners by using blaze cakes. Each one of these 18 pistons is outputting 16,384 SU each, as long as we feed the engine enough water and heat. We can haunt a bell to make a haunted bell. This is useful because if you right click this bell, it will light up areas where hostile mobs can spawn with little ghosts like this. By putting a steam whistle on a fluid tank, which is heated from underneath, and then giving the tank a redstone signal, we can output different tones. We can add to the length of the steam whistle or change the width using a wrench in order to change the tone. Here you can see that we have C sharp, E, and F sharp. We can make a sheep farm by giving deployers shears that then shear our sheep. Sheep can eat grass through seats, which means that they don't have to roam free. Here we have all the sheep in different colors so that we get all the different colors of wool. Using a clockwork bearing, you can make a working clock using create. This will show the current in-game time. We can put display links on a cuckoo clock. This allows us to output the current in-game time onto a display board or a set of Nixie tubes. It will work with any display that a display link can connect to. By placing a schematic and adding the play schematic as a filter to our deployer, we can make a 3D printer. Just make sure that you have an inventory with all the needed blocks connected. When I press the buttons here, the deployer will move and place any blocks that match the schematic we placed earlier. So as you can see, when I move back and forth here, the printer is placing the blocks in the correct locations. This could allow you to automate the creation of contraptions, for example. And that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something new. Make sure to give the video a like and leave a comment with something interesting you have learned about Create. I would love to hear it. Create mod schematics for a lot of the things shown in this video are available on my website, schematiccanon.com, and I will link to them in the video description below. This entire map will be available to download, and I will add a link to that as well. You can also join my Discord to ask questions and receive updates about all the things I do. I also live stream on Twitch from time to time, so please do give me a follow there as well. Thank you so much for watching, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.